Hello, welcome to today's video where I'll be covering my webcomic process in Clip Studio Paint. In this series of videos, I'll be going over how you can use Clip Studio Paint to convert your traditional layout comic into a vertical comic, or work in both formats simultaneously. For today, I'll discuss an overview of the differences between the formats and some things to consider before getting started. Links to additional tutorials, as well as everything mentioned in today's video, will be down in the description below. With the popularity of various webcomic platforms on the internet, the vertical comic format has cemented itself as the go-to choice for many creators. Unlike the traditional page layout, which was designed for page flipping in a physical book, the vertical comic layout is a product of modern smart devices like phones and tablets. It's meant to be scrolled through like one would scroll through an app or a website. For more information on this format and how to work with it in Clip Studio Paint, check out my earlier video, how to make a webtoon canvas in Clip Studio Paint. Depending on an artist's needs, utilizing both formats for the same comic can be to their benefit. Vertical comics are more suitable for browsing the web on small devices, but what about when that artist wants to sell physical copies? How about artists that draw their comics traditionally first? Or what about older webcomic series that want to reformat for modern platforms? In this video series, I'd like to cover the process of switching formats to get the best of both worlds for your comic series. To start, we should recognize that there are some notable differences between traditional and vertical comic formatting that can affect the way they read. The long vertical panel structure of vertical comics is suitable for building suspense and atmosphere or displaying prominent scenery, whereas smaller, more rectangular panels are usually used to display quick actions dialogue, or less important details. Gradients and overlapping elements behind and in front of your panels are also frequently used to add some visual interest to the space. One common technique used in vertical comics is unbound panels, panels that have no borders and simply use the edges of the canvas as their limits. This is typically used for showing off scenery or depicting an important moment that wants to grab the reader's full attention. These are somewhat similar to the traditional printed comic technique known as a spread, where two pages make up one large panel or series of panels to make it appear more grand and momentous. The major defining difference between these two is that one is completely vertical, while the other is almost always completely horizontal. Traditional comics, on the other hand, tend to use a bigger variety of panel shapes, and those panels are usually more square in shape, since they have limited page dimensions to work with. It's less common to see decorative elements outside the panels themselves because of printing limitations. It's also worth noting that in traditional comics, panels are usually grouped together closely in a puzzle-type shape and share the same real estate on the page, whereas vertical comics tend to highlight one panel at a time, with distance between each panel to encourage scrolling. This not only affects the reading experience, but means that certain panels meant to be sandwiched between each other will now have to stand out on their own when you convert them. Because of these contrasting design principles, it can be tough to just rip panels directly from one format and switch them over to the other without having to make some adjustments. For example, I have my traditional format webcomic, Darily and the Magician's Key, and my vertical format comic, The Necromancer's Assistant. As you can see here, if I wanted to just copy and paste panels from my traditional comic straight over to the vertical comic, they're a little too small and squat to use the format correctly. Since readers will be scrolling, you want your panels to take up enough length of the screen that they'll get a good view of them. But since these panels are so short, the reader will either have to pause their scrolling to focus on them, or will just give them a quick glance and keep moving, neither of which is ideal. On the other hand, if I try to pull panels from the vertical comic and place them on the traditional canvas, they're too awkwardly shaped to fit on the page. This can either mean having to crop some of my panels or add in additional details, and I'd prefer not to do either. Another factor to consider is text bubbles and sound effects. In vertical comics, there's much more room for text since the canvas can simply be extended vertically to fit as many bubbles as you want without obscuring the artwork. Traditional comics, however, suffer from the limitation of a rigid canvas size and limited panel real estate, meaning an abundance of text bubbles or sound effects may cover up the artwork or fit awkwardly on the page without careful consideration. 
That's the basic rundown of major format differences you should keep in mind. In the next video, I'll show some of Clip Studio Paint's tools that you can use for reformatting your comic quickly and easily. Check the description below for my social media links and more tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Clip Studio Paint.